Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Atari 2600 demo show. And first of all, for anybody who doesn't know what Atari 2600 is, it is a gaming console by the Atari Corporation, uh, originally released in 1977, so it is now 41 years old. So this is one of the oldest pieces of hardware that people are creating demos for. Probably the only game console that has wood grain finish. It's really nice. It has some nice 70s sort of home stereo wood paneling in there. And the machine we have here is not exactly stock. It's modified to produce an RGB output. By default, you can only use this with a TV modulator because this was designed in the 70s. And it also has a special cartridge called the Harmony cartridge where you can use an SD card and uh, run uh, cartridge images. And we have a selection of something like 30 plus demos from the past, I'd say 10 to 15 years, mostly the past like 10 years. And there's gonna be some productions by our group at Trilobit and Wamma, and also other groups as well. So there's gonna be sort of a selection of something I think is the best. And I didn't introduce myself, I am of course VC of Trilobit, bit and some other groups and yeah so sort of this is my take on what's sort of the best on Atari 2600 and the first thing we're gonna show after this intro is a 10 minute video from uh, Mikko Heinonen who actually provided the hardware and modified it to show you how can you take a piece of 70s home console gear and uh, sort of modify it to the modern sort of television systems and get a really nice clear signal out of it be it for playing games or watching demos so we're going to run the video now. It is a peculiar system to use these days because it's really built around the, the CRT television system. And uh, for us to get any sort of decent image out of it, we have to mod it for RGB signal output. Uh, this particular console was previously modded for composite video, but the quality, like, left a lot to be desired, so I decided to uh, remod it, and this time, I'm using a kit built by Tim Worthington and he sells it for around 70 Australian dollars but to get started we need to do some other modifications first uh, there's a there's a coil and an oscillator that, that sort of stick out of the main board and I had to remove those the coil doesn't need to go back in because I don't need the RF output anymore but the oscillator sort of needs to go back but uh, I needed to extend the the legs somewhat so I just soldered in a, a bit of wire and, and this is just done uh, in order to make the surface flat to install the the additional PCB because uh, what the 2600 RGB mod as it's called does is um, it reads the TIA the television interface adapter chip and then uh, generates RGB uh, images based on that so uh, it's an FPGA uh, a very complex t type of system for this task and many times more powerful than the Atari itself but uh, what it does it, it's cr it creates a more or less real-time image and uh, so there's no noticeable lag or, or anything like that but uh, we need to pull out the the TIA from the socket. Uh, in this system, fortunately, it was socketed, otherwise you have to desolder it and then solder in a socket and that usually, I've done that once and then it results in a more unreliable uh, setup. Then there are these pin headers and I'm just tr trying to test fit them in order to see how, how they should go in and then once I have them sort of where I want them, I'll just solder them at the ends in order to uh, make them somewhat flexible so I can uh, I can adjust them and really in there straight I'll just solder the rest of the pins and uh, as you can see this is like sped up it's about 10 times as, as, as fast and and still I'm like spending time doing unnecessary changes and so on but here's a necessary one because there's a capacitor that sticks out I tried bending the legs and I noticed that okay it's not gonna fit it's too big so what I decided to do is I'll just take it out and replace it with another one a new capacitor that has longer legs uh, 
the caps on these systems they don't really go bad so there's no need to re replace it for any other reason but uh, uh, just to make space and now when when that's done uh, I'm just soldering in the in the headers and and then the the socket for the for refitting the the TIA and this is like not meant to be a, a tutorial on how to install it's more like a work log uh, I make stupid mistakes all the time my my desk is messy but uh, this is how I work and uh, uh, some people wanted to see how it's done so I decided I'll, I'll just log it I use a an action camera uh, above the desk and uh, uh, Tim Worthington has put up the the instructions on his website and I'm following them and it's highly useful because it's nearly impossible to do if you don't have them the next thing you do is uh, solder in these uh, wires and they're actually for controlling the the pallet and, and doing other th things once the the system is running and for that you need an extra button on your joystick um, I haven't actually fitted the, the joystick with one yet but but I might do that so I don't want it to also install that it's not strictly required for the for the RGB mod itself then there's a small EEPROM chip and the socket for that and that that's going in and now finally we get to soldering the uh, the socket for housing the the TIA which I pulled out and now I'm going to put put it back in so it's still uh, like in direct contact with the motherboard so everything is is happening exactly as it should but the uh, the board is reading the signals and generating the image because rated so that's what the uh, 2600 RGB really does so now I have to start looking at the uh, wiring diagram and I'm also looking at where I want the uh, the connectors to go um, using this these wires that I bought from I think it was wish or eBay so the the good side is that that they're really cheap it's about a euro for, for for a bundle of them and they're color coded because you want to know which is your voltage line which is your your green red and blue and which is your sink and and so on um, the problem here was that they were slightly too short um, I would have wanted like an extra five centimeters or maybe ten that would have given me more room but it was what I had available at that time so I decided I'll just use that and these are more or less simple to solder on on because the pads are, are fairly large uh, actually for the control wires the the extra pads they're much smaller and you need to uh, fiddle around with them much more so those are going in and also for the audio it has a stereo connector even though it's a mono system of course and then there's this small board that, that takes them and uh, you don't actually solder in the connector yet because you have to first uh, fit the connector on the on the case and then uh, only solder the PCB on the connector once it's it's fitted and here again uh, I'm checking the wiring diagram on the on the PC it's insanely useful and also for the audio soldering in the the plug and this is like fairly simple and I've done this once before on an NTSC system but the, the demos mostly ran on on PAL so I needed to mod another one and now I'm just test fitting the connector even though you're not supposed to solder it in yet and actually this is now from from another day I had to stop because I didn't have a, a tool I didn't have the pliers so I had to go get them and now I'm just uh, soldering in the, the so you need to fit a button that connects the up and down on the joystick at the same time and then when you press that and press another button then you can switch the pallets and so on it's more or less tweaking and like I said I haven't even installed it on my other system but I decided I'll, I'll do this one like properly just for just for future use probably and uh, it's a couple of wires that go on the the reset and the game select switches 
and then the rest go in the in the joystick port. The problem here was that it's actually not very well documented. You had to look at the colors of the wires in the pictures in order to make any kind of sense of it. So, so this took like unnecessarily long. But in the end, it, w it was okay. And also uh, separating the small wires and then running them so that they don't touch each other or anything else on the board. That takes time and, and can get messy. So this is like I would say this is an average type of thing. It's not recommended as a first soldering project, but it's not in impossible. And a good pair of tweezers comes in comes in handy. And next I have to uh, remove the old regulator for the voltage and then solder in this new daughter board that, that he's built. And I'm actually doing this sort of in, in the incorrect order because I'm soldering in this angled connector first which you really shouldn't do because what I end up doing now is noticing that okay I, I should have done this first and soldered it on the on the regulator board but no worries you can do that if you just like bend the pin slightly and now I'm just measuring that that uh, nothing is shorted because this is a surefire way to kill the entire system if, if it's if there's a shortcut of any kind here and then uh, you need a capacitor just to reduce the uh, some of the interference and so once that's done it's, it's more or less starting to get ready and now we have to look at the case and what I'm doing now is I'm trying to find a place for the for the connectors I decided to install them on the top half of the case uh, the instructions actually actually tell you to do that on the lower part but I've found them more useful to put them on the top because anyway you have to mount the the PCB on the top part anyway so uh, off camera I drilled some holes because I didn't have the correct drill bit so I had to work in a in a, in a very sort of problematic manner that I don't want to show you but uh, I'm soldering it in and then I'm putting in the audio connector and it uses the same cable as the NES RGB that he also built so I had that cable already and now all that's left to do is just to close the case and then put in Berserk and uh, much to my surprise it worked first try probably because I'd done that before but that was what I did now you get to watch some demos.
Thanks everybody for watching. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to work on this machine. As you can see, I've worked on a bunch of those uh, demos. And it's just uh, something that was made seven years before I was even born. And for this old hardware, and this is pretty much as old as you can get in a compo. There's, there's some PDP ones and stuff you can do demos on, but the word is still out there. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing more demos on 60s and 70s hardware, but this is definitely one of those things that you can pretty easily get your hands on, and it's very simple to understand and extremely minimalistic, and that's why I've enjoyed making stuff on it with, with my friends. So hope you enjoyed the demo show, and now you have a sort of slice of what's good on Atari. There's a lot more demos that I didn't have time to show. Uh, so you, if you're interested, go search on Poet for Atari 2600 demos. And have a great rest of the party and hope you enjoyed your time here. Thanks.